Hey everyone, it is Shannon and it is Friday, so it is time for a Friday Reads video. In my Friday Reads videos, I share the books that I finished, the books that I started, and anything interesting I'm carrying over week to week. And I think I got a couple finishes and a carryover. I'm not going to talk about any starts because, man, this was the week of, like, starting all the things and, like, reading, like, two chapters and then, like, starting something else and reading, like, two chapters and then... Realizing I'm not going to finish them due to my internal timeline deadline and then feeling like that. But I don't want to talk about those books. <laughs> I don't want to talk about those books. We're going to talk about some other books. So I did have a couple of finishes this week and one of which was Vo uh, The Voyage of Argo by Apollonius of Rhodes. This is a classic um, Greek mythology uh, 250 BC, so this is an oldie, um, and it follows the story of Jason and the Argonauts and the quest for the Golden Fleece. Um, and I will admit this is, um, I did not get every single moment of <laughs> this book, because it is quite old, but they have um, great wonderful illustrations. It's a folio edition. And um, so, but it is an adventure story. And there is, there's a map. But I did not, I did not pick up on all of the moments. And I have kind of resigned myself to be okay with that. Um, I find I could um, approach it more studiously and like stop and every word I'm unfamiliar with look it up and every time I realize oh I'm missing something I can backtrack and read it again I feel like if I do that I will never finish it I'm not saying I will never do that with any book and I'm not actually even recommending to do this but sometimes I feel like I want to get enough of the story enough of the experience enough of the in this case the adventure to sort of have a sense of what happened and some moments and stuff like that and I'm okay with that um but I really I was I wish I had stuck with it at the beginning a little stronger with retention um, and gone back and reread stuff and I didn't do that I did that more towards the middle and the end so that wasn't good so the beginning of the adventure I'm not quite sure what happened or why they wanted the golden fleece <laughs> or how they found out about the golden fleece or why Jason decided to go and I think a lot of that is because I read um, the beginning of this book I read it at night and I should know better I should know by now for me with classics with older works with harder texts with some translated texts it's way better for me to read them during the day I am much more like you know or during the evening like I'm much more alert um, I am much more like you know ready to absorb by the time the day is at the end of the day I still can read but not harder works not classic text so that wasn't great so but I did finish off it finish it off toward it, reading it during the day and the carrot for me the takeaway with this um, like uh, Hercules is in this as well and one of the confusing things about this one is when they often talked about Hera they called her her H-E-R, or here, H-E-R-E, -E. um, and often it would, I'm trying to find an example, and often it would be at the beginning of the, the sentence, here, a, or here, did this, or did that, but when you see, see here, H-E-R-E, -E, at the beginning of the sentence, it just sounds like, like here, not a person, but here, so that took me a while to pick up on that here was actually Hera, which is, um, uh, she is Zeus's wife um, and I'm trying to remember if she was trying to help him or if she was trying to hinder them <laughs> now that I've read a fair amount of Greek mythology man those gods man they really just sort of like see what happens when we do this <laughs> see what happens if we do this let's put that obstacle in there um, so he definitely had sort of the cards stacked against him but he did have the help of Medea which who was a great character um, just just extraordinary and um i really enjoyed that it's funny because i know there's a play medea so most of what i know from the characters from that i don't know if it's referring i imagine it's referring to the same medea um but and i know sort of some of the themes of that play which actually did not come into play in the book so but she is um like m magical um, and she has abilities, uh, and she can conjure magic, um, but I can't remember if she's mortal or not. I can't remember if Jason's mortal. See, not all of it stuck. 
So not all of it stuck, but I did finish it and I'm really happy that I finished it even though I didn't remember everything. I definitely will go back and reread it. I think that's a fun thing to do with classics, especially classics that have lots of adaptations. Um, so I can go watch a film or, a, you know, uh, I don't know, any kind of dramatization of uh, the story and then or even read things that are inspired by it because um, the story itself, I'm sure, is great, and I'm sure I did not get all of it. Very sure on that, but I did finish it, so yeah. So. Is it weird to talk about, like, books that I'm like... <laughs> my retention level is not is not high? I don't know. It's the truth. I finished it, and I don't remember a lot of it. Anyway, next up, I finished... <laughs> <laughs> the sort of this is a set of short stories called The Last Good Night. Um, there's five parts of them. It is by Tiffany Rice, and this is within the world of the original Sinners um, books, which are erotica books. And I have read now I've read these five stories because I read them like in the past couple weeks. And I also have read The Mistress Files, which I think is three point five but I haven't actually read the original Sinners and I really really want to it starts with the siren and I think I am intimidated by the fact that it's long it's over 400 pages long and I have it I bought it and I'm just like just I don't know so I keep reading around <laughs> the series so but these were all these were all about 30 pages long and um it follows the character of Nora who I think is I don't know if she's the main character of the original Sinners I totally don't know how that that series works at all but I think she was the protagonist in the Mistress Files which is another collection of short stories and I don't even know how these were released like I don't know if they were online or I don't know they're by Harlequin Mira and then from I got them from the library but as individual works but as I said they're like 30 pages long so this is erotica this has some BDSM elements to it um, and so it's not for everyone I did enjoy the story um, and I would put it in erotica as opposed to romance or romance erotica um, romance readers will know what I mean by that? Um, I think if you don't know, I, I can let you know, but it's kind of a spoiler. So, um, but, um, but I, but it is a differentiation that people want to know. Um, so yeah, so I enjoyed these. They are pretty uh, intense. Some of them, not all of them. Um, and it follows uh, Nora who meets someone and he ends up being her protector for a period of time because there is some unrest um, in the community and um, and um, you know and then it's her interacting with some of the characters that are pre-established I imagine within the original series the original center series um, as well as being uh, like like attracted to this guy who is her protector and stuff like that and she's a dom and uh, yeah and it was I thought it was really good I really liked the stories there's lots of um, it was an amazing amount of character development and backstory in five different, uh, like, 30-page stories. I really felt like I got to know her character and his character a fair amount. And um, and it was, like, a fair amount of um, real-world implications of things as well, which also sort of sometimes I find can break things out of romance, which can often um, uh, um, be very focused on the the happily ever after um so this one really looked at some challenging choices and um yeah and so i really liked it so i i really should read the original sinners um i just i haven't been reading as much romance so i'm sort of like easing myself in by reading shorter works and so i'm hoping that's going to work and this has got me thinking about reading the siren again let me know if you have read it um i know it's it's an eight book series it's two sets of four um and so i think that's also got me a little like wow that's that's quite a commitment <laughs> that's quite a commitment um i've also been i almost finished this morning i almost finished it um, the Black Flam Flamingo by Dean Adda. Um, and this is, this is, I said last week that it is a novel in verse. And I looked it up. I will leave the link down below. And actually, I talked to my sisters about what a novel in verse is and verse and poetry versus prose and stuff. We had a, quite a conversation about it, which was quite awesome. There you both studied English. Um, and I did not. Um, well, that's not true. I did have to take a college course in English at art school because I didn't do well enough on the uh, entrance exam. But that's another story. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Long time ago. 
<laughs> anyway, so yeah, so it is, I can't, now actually, I can't remember off the top of my head what exactly the definition is. I will put it down below again, but it is, I think it is telling one long story through lots of poems. And I'm very, very close to the end. I'm 90% through um, and uh, I'm enjoying it. There is some stuff, maybe I'll wait to talk about it more until I've finished it. But there are some moments where I'm kind of like, wow, that felt really like a really clear statement after a lot of sort of confusion over something. But I think it was, it's also like, because, but I think it's also amazing the clarity of some of the statements. Um, so I don't know, I'm still processing that because like I'm reading it feeling like, wow, like, you know, is he, he didn't seem that clear on thinking about this particular thing. And then when he starts talking about it, it was like, zing. And so I was like, wow, it's just it's surprising a little bit, but I am enjoying it. And now it is a coming of age um, story. And um, real like, I've just, I can feel like, I think there's like two more chapters like, and I'm so close. So I am enjoying it. Um, what else? Oh, I also wanted to talk a little bit about, um, cause I haven't been reading tons uh but apparently i've been talking tons already anyway but i did i am continuing on with july's um all the worlds a page readathon which is a shakespeare inspired readathon so i did re-watch the macbeth uh adaptation with michael fassbender and marion cotillard and oh it doesn't have the does it have the director the director is so good he also directed snowtown which is one of the most, or I think it actually is the most harrowing film I've ever seen. It is so good, but I actually, it's so disturbing. I, I don't tend to recommend it because it's, it's very, very, very disturbing. But Macbeth, oh, it was so, so great to rewatch it. So it stars uh, Michael Fassbender, Marion Cotillard, and there they are together as Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. Um, and I really enjoyed rewatching it. One of the, ch I think it has some challenges um, in terms of they talk really quietly pretty much throughout the whole movie. Um, but I just put the headphones in <laughs> and I was like, it just, and I thought I realized how much of a, uh, um, like an interesting choice that is because of course, if you're performing live, you don't have the option to talk quietly, right? Unless you, you fake whisper, like if you have to project to the person in the back, it's gotta hear. So, but in a film, you actually can talk quietly. And there is a sort of stark, stark quality to um, it and the, but the landscapes, oh my gosh, like I have one, I have some, I actually printed off some sprocket pictures of the landscapes because they're so gorgeous. And I posted this on Instagram and I'm just like, it, it just the, I think I'm actually going to do my, one of my things I want to do for the readathon is to do some art inspired and I was not going to do it like narratively inspired by a poem but I think I might actually just try and paint that because it's got such a wonderful gradation of color from this section to this section to this section to this section it just gets darker and darker and deeper and oh my god it was so good it was so good but I, it's funny I read some reviews on Letterboxd and some people did indicate that they did find it a bit hard to follow being unfamiliar with the play and I can kind of see that and it's a hard one for me to step back from because I do tend to rewatch it again and again and I know the story quite well and it is a bit of a different take on it they really set up some interesting stuff in terms of explaining some of the behavior or, or the drive of the characters, which because this play is sort of um, most like kind of about power, tyranny, inevitability. Um, and I, 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 even though I've read it a fair amount, I do find it hard to understand the motivation behind some of the actions, but they really gave a sort of like framing of what, what could be the motivation. And I was like, ooh. Ooh. Although they did take some liberties. There was one thing, there was one scene. I'm like, I'm not sure that person's in this room for that. Like, I don't, I don't think that happened, but I couldn't, there was a little time between when I had reread it and when I watched it, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It is so gorgeous. The landscapes, the set design, the costuming is so interesting. And I think the performances are really, really strong. Um, and I think they both have a pretty strong um, command of the language and the guy, oh my God, the guy who plays, is it Macduff? Oh, I forgot to look him up. Sean something. Um, I'm, I'll probably end up talking about this more when I do my All the World's uh, uh, page wrap up. Um, but I just thought I would mention it because I didn't end up finishing that much. And like just, 
it's so beautiful. I love analogous color stories, which is going like on like yellow, orange, red, or if it was different colors, like blue, green, purple, like, like fading, like how it would be on the color wheel. I particular, I just in particular love that. So yeah, so that really worked for me. And I almost like, I already want to rewatch it. I haven't watched it for years. I bought it when it came out because it didn't come out in the theater or I missed it in the theater. Um, and I was so excited because the director did Snowtown and I saw that at TIFF and I was just like, this is extraordinary. And I am so scared. Like I'm just so feel so 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 broken after watching that movie so anyway but um yeah so that's just you know let me know if you've seen that version of Macbeth or if you've seen a different version of Macbeth I think there's a Patrick Stewart version of Macbeth on Canopy um and I found on Hoopla there's a film version I can't remember the name of it of the where like there's people putting on a student production or they're not a student production they're putting on a production of Macbeth and then they start to see that their lives are aligning with the story of Macbeth. So I might watch that, but I had never heard of it. So sometimes that's a little like, never know how that's gonna turn out. But um, but I might try that out this weekend because I'm trying to watch one adaptation a weekend. Um, I did wanna mention a couple other things that are in the land of Booktube. One, I found out that Kara from Wild Book Garden, who is one of the co-hosts for All the Worlds a Page, she, along with Lynn Hermione, who is a blogger, are doing an under-hyped book collaborative, um, or yeah, collaborative, and uh, they are doing a live show this Sunday, July 19th at 2 p.m. PST or 10 p.m. BST. I'll put the announcement video um, up above for you to check out. So they're going to be, and they're also going to be doing recommendations. Um, and I think that's really cool to talk about underhyped books. Um, I, you know, it's something that I, I go back and forth thinking about in terms of like if I read something that's underhyped, how much do I want to talk about the fact that it's underhyped because I don't necessarily want to say not a lot of people have read this even if it is true or I don't hear people talking about that even if it is true because I'm like I don't want to like undermine it, you know? And then like with underhyped books, do you only talk about underhyped books that you like? Like what about underhyped books that you, you only were like a three star? Do you talk about that? I don't know. Anyway, so I am really curious about it. I think it's like it's one of the things I think the deeper you go into something, the more you find things that you haven't heard as about as much. Um, and I do think it's awesome to share those things. It's also so awesome to sort of be part of the things everyone's talking about. So I move back and forth on like how much I want to share about things that I've heard a lot about versus things that I don't hear people talking about. I guess I try do try and balance. I'm not a good balance person, but I do try and balance that a little bit. So I'm going to be very, very, very curious to see what Kara and Lynn say. I don't know if I'll be able to attend the live show. I might be gaming, but if I'm not gaming, I will definitely attend the live show. And regardless, I will watch it afterwards if I can't attend live. So let me know what you feel about underhype books. Definitely check out Kara's video. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think the live show is going to be fun. And also the announcements have been out for the Summer Fling, which is a romance-based readathon that is hosted by Sarah from Steeped in Books, as well as a plethora of other co-hosts, including Lizzie from Lizzie Faye Loves Books, Nicole from Who Picked That Book, and a whole bunch of people that I only found in the past little while that are romance folks on BookTube. Sarah created it. Uh, the, it's the new iteration of the Summer Romance Book Bingo, um, and this time they have a 12 prompt card that you can use to play along and it's for the whole month of August. So I will leave a link to um, Sarah's announcement video up above for you to check out. I have been putting together a TBR. Um, I, d I think I'm going to might go for four romance books and very short romance books because I'm really trying to get back into reading more romance. Um, but I'll talk about that whenever I do my August TBR, which won't be quite just yet. I will have my Grinchathon TBR hopefully up on Monday. Um, and I did want to say thank you to everyone who responded about um, the reviews, given their thoughts about, you know, if they liked watching uh, review videos and what style they like. Because um, I do think that my I think I am going to get back to doing reviews and uh, maybe books in series, which is something I've talked about before, but I think I'm going to stick with anything where I start just at book one. So anything that I'm already in the middle of, I'm just going to read and enjoy. But if I read book one and enjoyed it, 
then that is definitely a book that will I will possibly review individually because I think it would be fun to do that. So yeah, so yeah, so I will have uh, more videos next week. Um, hopefully Grinchathon and probably a tag video. I'm trying to get more consistent with posting potentially Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but maybe not necessarily certain types of videos on certain days. I am going to try and stick with Friday reads, but I might switch to ra like re reading updates um, instead, depending on how things go. But I do really like Friday reads, so I might try and stick with that. So anyway, that is what I have been reading recently and a couple events on the horizon that I am looking forward to. Let me know what you are looking forward to and what you are reading, and I will see you again very soon in another video. Thanks so much for watching.